Hi everyone, I am Jeyoung from South Korea. I'm a Google developer expert for Android and Kotlin, and currently working at Stream as an Android developer advocate. Today, I will be speaking about exploring an Android open source project, Pokédex. Before diving into details, I'd like to elaborate on my open source contributions. I have created and published over 80 open source projects and libraries on GitHub, mostly about Android and Kotlin, such as Balloon, Landscapist, Sandwich, and Pokédex. My open source libraries have been used by billions of global end users across millions of different Android applications, and they have crossed 5 million downloads in 2022. Many people have asked me what was my motivation in the past five years. My motivation is to keep growing up by learning building, and sharing my work with people. I feel happy when I see my solutions are used by many global products and make the world better to live in. And that's why I am building open source projects for over five to six years continuously. So now let's talk about Pokédex. Pokédex is an open-source project to demonstrate modern Android development with JPEG libraries such as Hilt, Data Binding, Room Database, View Model, and Kotlin coroutines based on MVVM architecture. This project also uses many trended open-source libraries to show you how they can be utilized in real-world projects. The screens in Pokédex are very simple. There are two screens, the main screen and the details screen. The main screen displays a list of Pokémon, and the details screen displays information about a selected Pokémon. If you want to explore the entire source code, check out the Pokédex project on GitHub. Now, let's explore the tech stacks to build the Pokédex project. Firstly, let's look into a user interface. The user interface was built with XML-based and material design components. Pokédex uses data binding to bind UI components in layouts to data sources in declarative ways. Pokédex also uses Glide to load network images, transformation layout to implement container transform animation, and other custom view libraries such as Android Reborn, Progress View, and Rainbow. The next one is Business Logic. Pokédex uses Jetpack's Loom database to construct a local database, Retrofit to communicate with remote servers, Moshi to serialize JSON format responses from the network, Coroutines and Flow to execute heavy tasks asynchronously, and sandwich for modeling retrofit responses and handling exceptions. In the other parts, Pokédex was built with Hilt to construct dependency injection, app startup to configure app initialization, baseline profiles, and macro benchmark to improve app performance. In this talk, we will not cover those entire dependencies, 
Instead, we will focus on the implementation, especially the entire architectures and key open source libraries that are used to build Pokédex. Next, let's explore app architecture. Pokédex follows Google's recommended app architecture. The app architecture consists of two layers, the UI layer and the data layer. The UI layer contains the user interface, such as activity and data binding, and the presentation, such as view model, which connects the user interface and data layer. The data layer includes repositories to execute business logic, such as fetching data from the network and persisting remote data into a local database. We can simply describe the app architecture as two layers. User interactions from the UI layer move down to the data layer, and the result of the business logic from the data layer move up to the UI layer as observable streams. Therefore, events and data move in a single direction, which is called unidirectional data flow. Firstly, let's look into the UI layer. UI layers consist of UI elements that can invoke user actions, such as buttons and checkboxes. If UI elements invoke a user interaction, the event will be passed to a view model, and the view model passes the events to lower layers, such as domain or data layers. View model also receives data streams from the lower layers and transforms data into bindable data that can be easily observed from the UI elements. Then UI elements configure the screen following the bindable data. Therefore, the role of the UI layer can be primarily defined in three ways. The first one is transforming streams into bindable data, which reflect the result of business logic, and each UI element configures screens about enti entire scenarios that come from the bindable data. Second, view models hold data and restore the state of UI elements from configuration changes. So it prevents refetching the same data from the business logic and reduces data requests. Lastly, the architecture takes unidirectional event flow to allow entire user interactions from UI elements to follow into only view models. Pokédex uses data binding library to transform streams of business data into bindable data. Data binding is a support library that allows you to bind UI components in your layouts to data sources in your app using a declarative format rather than programmatically. If your project does not use Jetpack Compose yet, the data binding library can be a great solution in XML and MBBM architecture to achieve unidirectional data flow. If you want to learn more about the data binding, check out the Android's official documentation about the data binding library. Pokédex also uses another open source library, Bindables. Bindables is an Android data binding kit that allows you to create bindable properties easily, which can notify data changes to UI layers without third-party observable solutions, 
such as live data and state flow. It supports two-way binding, binding functions, and bindable solutions for recycle view. So you can utilize it to notify data changes easily to your XML layouts. If you're interested in learning more about bindables, you can check it out on GitHub. Now, let's take a look at the implementation details. The details screen displays the information of a selected Pokemon, such as name, stats, and types. As we discussed before, after receiving the business data from the data layer, we should transform it into bindable data. Pokédex uses data binding to transform business data into bindable data, which UI elements in XML can easily observe. So each bindable property is initialized in view models, and they can be changed only in view models. The bindable properties are also responsible for holding data in view models. So UI elements can restore and the fetch it data easily across configuration changes without additional requests. In XML, UI elements observe the bindable data declared in view models and update screens from data changes. Now let's look into the data layer. The data layer consists of multiple repositories which execute business logic, such as performing queries in a local database, fetching remote data from the network, and integrating them into a single source of data. One of responsibilities of the repository is to expose the business data as streams outside to allow other layers to observe the data, such as UI layer. And UI layers must be prepared to react to data changes from the other layers, such as domain or data layers. So that means the business data must not be changed outside of repositories, and other layers only observe the immutable data. If you look into the implementation of repositories, you can find repositories expose only local data from the database to guarantee a single source of truth. So repositories centralize all data sources in one place and synchronize application data from multiple data sources, such as remote and local data sources. You can see the single source of truth often appears in Android's official documentation. The single source of truth is a philosophy of aggregating data from multiple data sources within a, an organization to a single location. So you can prevent information inconsistency by taking only one data reference point. So Pokédex persists remote data sources into the local database, and the repository exposes the local data sources to other data layers as streams. With this, you can implement a single source of truth and offline supports at the same time. Now, let's take a look at the details of repositories. As you can see, the main repository interface defines the abstraction of functions, and the main repository implement class implements the business functions. 
the key point is that the implementation of repository classes should not be exposed to other layers, and the other layers can only access to repository interfaces. So you can expose limited functionalities of the repositories and loosely coupled between the data layer and other layers with dependency injection. Let's look into the implementation of the function. Firstly, the fetch Pokemon list function performs queries in the local database with a given page number to find if there are stored Pokemon data. If the database already has Pokemon data, the fetch Pokemon list function emits the stored Pokemon list from the database. If the database doesn't include the Pokemon data, the fetch Pokemon list function fetches a Pokemon list from the network. If the network request succeeds, the function stores the remote data in, a, in the local database and emits the Pokemon list as a flow. But if the network request fail, the function invokes the onError lambda function with an error message instead of emitting Pokemon data. One of the key points of the fetch Pokemon list function is handling network responses. Let's see how Pokédex handle API call responses. We can define many scenarios from the network API call and we can classify them into the response and the exception. The response scenario represents the API call successfully received a response from the network and it can be classified into success or failure. And the exception scenario represents unexpected cases that could happen before getting a response from the network, such as IO exception and unknown host exception. However, in multi-layer architecture, handling each case can be tricky. So Pokédex wraps every possible scenario of the API wizards with a sealed class called API response. Then we can pass a wrapper class that contains the full context of API wizards to the other layers. By passing a wrapper class to call sites, the presentation layer can identify the API wizards and configure UI elements depending on the response type. To wrap API call responses, Pokédex uses Sandwich, which is a lightweight and portable sealed API library for modeling retrofit responses and handling exceptions. If you're interested in learning more about handling retrofit responses, check out the library on GitHub or my blog post about modeling retrofit responses. So we've explored the app architecture of Pokédex. But please keep in mind that this architecture is not the best choice for every project and you should treat them as guidelines. If you'd like to learn more about app architecture, you can check out Google's official guidelines about recommended architecture for building robust and high quality applications. Next, let's explore UI components that are used to build screens on Pokédex. Pokédex uses Container Transform to implement a transition motion from the main screen to the details screen. 
The container transform is a transition between UI elements that include a container and it increases immersive user experiences during screen changes. To achieve this, Pokédex uses an open source library, Transformation Layout. Transformation Layout allows you to implement the container transform easily between activities, fragments, and views. If you're interested in implementing the container transform in your project, check out Transformation Layout on GitHub. Pokédex also uses other custom view libraries such as Progress View and Android Ribbon to implement the details screens. They are also connected to the data binding, so they update UI changes by observing the bindable data. So let's see with the code. As you can see on the left side, Pokédex implemented custom binding adapters to set values to UI components in a declarative way in XML. The binding adapter allows you to specify the method called to set a value, provide your own binding logic, and specify the type of the returned object by using adapters. If you want to learn more about the data binding, the data bindings adapters, check out the Google's official documentation about binding adapters. Next, let's look around how Pokédex increases app performance. One of the great ways to improve your app performance is using baseline profiles which generates app information about classes and methods in advance. So during installation applications, ART performs AOT compilation of methods in the profile, excoding those methods faster when running the application for the first time. If you want to use baseline profiles, you need to add profile installer library on your grade file. Pokédex generates baseline profiles by running the test class called baseline profile generator. If you want to learn more about the code details, check out the benchmark module on the Pokédex project. If you run the baseline profile generator, a text file will be created like this. For Pokédex, the baseline profiles generate around 15,000 lines of pre-built code about the classes and methods. Since the Android runtime proceeds um, with AOT compilation using this information in advance, you can expect around 40% performance improvement when running the application for the first time. If you'd like to learn more about baseline profiles, you can check out Google's official guidelines about baseline profiles. Now it's time to build your own open source project. By building your open source project, you will learn many new tech stacks by yourself. And by sharing it with the community, you will get many useful feedbacks from developers around the globe. Don't be afraid to share your code with people. If you don't know where to start, Exploring open source platforms will be very helpful in getting inspiration. Firstly, you can look around Google Dev Library Platform, which is a collection of open source projects 
and blog posts submitted by professional developers on Google Tags, such as Android, Flutter, Cloud, and more. It's a great place to find new ways to solve a problem, find ideas for your next project, and stay up to date with the latest technologies. The website is really well organized and you can search for projects by category. Thank you for having me today. I am happy to talk about my open source experience and I hope this presentation inspires you.